Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to Commute Talk. It's Thursday here, and we got two more days until the Christmas holiday. So I know I'm pretty excited about not setting an alarm and then getting up slightly later to work on my operating system. I hope you're excited about the holidays, too. <laughs> um, so today, um, a person who pokes badger with spoons writes in asking about um, if I were not doing Serenity, what kind of software would I be doing? And what kind of features do I think new operating systems should include? So thank you for asking these questions. They are very difficult. <laughs> um, but if I were not doing Serenity, I don't know what I would be doing. And it's hard to imagine anything else right now, software-wise. But if I look at what I was doing before, uh, I had my long-running x86 emulator project. I would probably have picked that up and tossed it around a little bit. But as fun as that project has been for me, it never really managed to hold my attention for more than maybe four weeks or so maximum at a time. And then I would just run out of energy and do something else. and. Um, I don't think I would be doing it all the time. I guess uh, probably I would be spreading myself out across a few different things. So some other things I had going on before uh, Serenity was I was making a regex engine, a text editor um, I was toying around with, and um, I also wanted to build a uh, programming language and I wasn't really sure which one it was going to be, if it was going to be some existing one or a new one. But I just wanted to go through the, like this process that so many programmers have gone through already of building a toy language. Like I never did that, so it was something that interested me. I, just, I guess I felt like I was playing catch up. Um, and if I, if I think about it, after I left Apple in 2017, um, I sort of got back <clears throat> this, uh, I mean, it, it took me some time, but after a while, this, this like uh, childlike curiosity and, and uh, wonderment about programming started coming back to me. And um, I started feeling like, like I have so much catching up to do. And that's how I got into <laughs> doing a regex engine, because uh, I just thought, oh, I bet there's so much I could learn just by um, by reading some computer science books, and they got me down that path. And it was interesting, it was really fun, making like um, this NFAs and DFAs and things, and I enjoyed that. But, um, but the thing I do now is, I guess, much more fitting to my personality, which is I, I like to build, and uh, I like to build rapidly and wide and tall. <laughs> Um, and it's really fun. Um, but we'll see where that goes. But if I were not doing Serenity, I think I would just be doing many different things and just trying to catch up with, um, with lost time, I guess. And to be perfectly honest, like I've, I've had a lot of weird uh, hang-ups about programming in my life, about um, feeling insecure, about uh, not, <clears throat> like how I didn't have a, um, any higher education or any education in programming really. And I used to feel like, oh, everyone else knows a lot more than I do and they have much fancier solutions and they all know all the fancy data structures and algorithms and whatnot. And, I used to feel like I have to catch up with all these people, I have to compensate for this somehow, and um, I don't feel that way anymore, which is really nice because it's something that was uh, internally harassing me my whole life. But I think when I started doing the Serenity OS, then it finally let go of me, which is really nice. <clears throat> Anyways, 
don't know. I was doing lots of different things. Um, definitely open source, though. Uh, that's that's definitely something I like doing, and um, something that I would say maybe one of the few regrets I have about working at the places I worked is that as fun as it was and as much as I learned and as great as the people were, um, these big tech companies, they really uh, put their foot on you when it comes to um, open source, like random open source contributions, spare time open source stuff. <clears throat> uh, you don't have a lot of room to move around on those subjects and it's really sad and it really kills the creativity in, in a lot of people, myself included I think. But I don't want to blame it either, because uh, I wasn't that motivated to do my open source, any open source stuff in those years. Um, but maybe that was because I knew that even if I were motivated and started doing something, it couldn't go anywhere. I don't know. It's a, it's a sad thing, and I wish these uh, companies would change their minds about a lot of things. Anyways. Uh, then uh, the other part of your question was what kind of features do I think new operating systems should have? And that's a very open and interesting question, I guess. And I don't want to pretend to be an expert on operating systems because I'm really not. Uh, I'm more of a very interested amateur who's uh, is trying to learn more about this stuff by um, by like replicating it and, and like understanding it as I go. Um, so I have far more experience using operating systems than I have building or designing them. But even so, I guess I can I can still answer the question what I personally think. But that doesn't mean that these are good or mature <laughs> or reasonable ideas. So. Something that I personally care a lot about is memory usage. And I don't remember where it started for me, but it was just, it always felt to me like memory usage is like the underdog metric of performance metric <laughs> metrics. Um, people always care about speed and um, to, to an extent, people also nowadays care about power usage and even, even before when people didn't care about power usage at all, uh, although they would still worry about thermals, but um, power usage just came on the scene and, and just like, uh, you know, show, elbowed out um, memory usage and, and like took its place as number two, I would say. Memory usage just can't get his day in the sun. And um, to me, there's something about memory usage that just speaks to me. like. Uh, and I was obsessed with memory usage in all the projects that I worked on. It was my primary area of focus in uh, WebKit and Safari for many years, and both on iOS and macOS. So it's something I'm intimately familiar with and uh, <laughs> get, very, get very passionate about memory usage. So uh, where am I going with that? Well, I think for me, new operating systems I really think that they should include um, as many facilities as possible for uh, analyzing and understanding memory usage and then uh, reducing it and making it more effective um, and just tools to help programmers make better use of memory uh, and um, tools for, for programs to communicate more to the operating system what it's doing with memory, what his memory usage profile is, and um, all kinds of, of things in, in that area. And like, um, like lately that I've been adding the uh, purgeable memory feature to Serenity, for example, it's been really, really exciting because it's a feature that I really love um, I really loved as a user for many years, and just getting to sit down and implement it has been super exciting because it, it has forced me to start thinking about how does this actually work, 
and <clears throat> and of course I, I'm not like I'm definitely not trying to replicate the exact mechanism from from any other system but rather uh, just the spirit of it of course but uh, but I think that it's such an interesting feature and I just know that that this idea has um, sibling ideas or cousin ideas that are waiting to be discovered because it's just such a simple brilliant little thing and, and there has to be more things like it just waiting for us to think of them and I guess I would like to see new operating systems explore ideas in, in that direction um, these days everyone gets so excited about performance and multi-threading and multi-everything parallelism GPUs blah 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 and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with those things it's just uh, I like memory usage I, I like it a lot and it's I don't know why I, I haven't built more tools for it in Serenity. I think I think it's it's coming. It's just this thing where I just needed to take a break from memory usage for a while just to get my bearings. Um, just like I needed to take a break from browsers for a while, and then I one day just started doing a browser engine. And now lately, I've been starting to feel like it'd be fun to to do some memory stuff. Uh, so I think that that's a very good feature, and then I, I really just I really have to express my fondness, I guess, for the OpenBSD project. <clears throat> I think that they do a lot of really interesting work that I think new operating systems should take note of. Um, <clears throat> I've been implementing some of their mitigation techniques in Serenity lately and I'm very happy with them so far and um, I was just watching a talk by um, Theo Derat yesterday about uh, Pledge in OpenBSD and I think that's just such a, a genius thing. It's so simple and it's just like this little tweak to the Unix model that just um, cuts down the attack surface dramatically and makes makes programs better and I think new operating systems should follow their lead and, and implement the same thing. I definitely intend to implement uh, Pledge or something Pledge-like in Serenity um, and just this um, I guess this whole mentality of like proactive mitigations where um, you are just um, putting as many hardware um, hardware powered enforcements as possible of correctness in your system. I think that that's something that I would like more uh, more operating systems to do. Um, like whenever stuff is enforced, I think that's really good. And I mean that's that's kind of an obvious thing these days, but I, I like that type of stuff. And I'm not a security person by any means. I'm not security minded. I just uh, I appreciate the uh, the enforcement of correctness, I guess. Uh, and I think I would I would find it very hard to get excited about security in any real way. I've tried for many years and it just doesn't happen. But if I think about correctness and enforcing correctness and like deterministically crashing things that are behaving incorrectly now that gets me excited and uh, that's something I think new operating systems should do as much as possible of is just enforcing correctness um, and maybe honestly sacrificing performance um, make, making uh, like being more willing to sacrifice performance for correctness uh, and a good example of that is um, this issue where what was it, hyperthreading? Intel hyperthreading was discovered to have some um, security issues that you could uh, leak data across the hyperthreads or whatever it was. I don't remember. It was one of these 
brand name security bugs in the last few years. And uh, OpenBSD, they were early and just said, okay, we're just gonna disable hyperthreading because there's no way this is not buggy. Um, that was my understanding. <laughs> and it turned out that they were right about that. And, um, and I think that that type of thinking is, uh, I find that type of thinking quite compelling. Like, it's, it's okay to, to disable some performance features if it means that you think you can enforce correctness. Uh, of course, maybe they were not sure at first there, but I don't know. Even so, being, being correct and running correctly is more important than running fast. And because, because um, and, and it's kind of weird to say that because I've also been like a performance engineer for many years and uh, I've certainly <laughs> made a lot of programming decisions where I chose um, speed over correctness with, within like fudge factors and stuff. But these days, now that I'm not working on a consumer operating system anymore or consumer software, uh, it's nice to to be able to change the way I think and say like, well, screw the performance, right? Like, let's make a best effort to go fast and, and make sure that we go correct instead. And it's really nice. And I think I think that's something that I wish all operating systems would would think would think more in that direction. So shout outs to OpenBSD for being the cool guys in this area. Um, and I don't know about other stuff. I mean, there's a million, probably a million things that I wish operating systems would have. There's one thing I wish I, they wouldn't have is this uh, cloud integration stuff. I, I really don't want that in my operating system. I don't want my operating system to connect to whoever made the operating system and um, send or fetch things. I don't want any of that. Uh, so, but I, there's a, I have a choice in operating systems, right? And it's, it's very easy to find something that doesn't do that, um, at least for now. And I'm pretty sure that it's gonna continue being that way. But it, just in case it, it doesn't turn out that way, it's, it's nice to know that I at least have Serenity, which will definitely never connect um, to <laughs> serenityos.org by default, arm boot or whatever. Anyways, now that's a promise, by the way. So, uh, I don't know what else to say about these subjects, but I guess I'll, I guess I'll stop talking. Uh, so, I hope I answered your questions, and um, thank you for asking them. It's interesting. So many interesting things. Um, yeah, so let's go and have a Thursday at work. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out with me on the commute. And I hope you have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.